Hey everyone, this is Paul from Ortho Valpal. Today I want to talk about metatarsalgia. I want to talk about the diagnosis. How do we diagnose this? I want to talk about some of the causes and I also want to discuss the treatment. Okay, so some simple treatment tips that you can do at home. Now this is something that we treat an awful lot in the clinic in physical therapy. I am a physical therapist. I have been for over 32 years and um, it's something that we see a lot of. So I can really give you some pointers and some pearls on what is really uh, helpful at first. First, and if it doesn't get better with what I tell you today, then you should seek out the advice of maybe an orthopedic specialist or maybe a podiatrist who can help you along. And even physical therapy can help with a lot of these foot and ankle problems. But so what is metatarsalgia? Well, it's kind of a junk term for pain around the ball of the foot right in this area. So we're just going to kind of show you where the joint is and Michael's a little ticklish so he's gonna have a tough time with this but this is where the metatarsal phalangeal joint is okay so there's a joint here and basically when we bring the toes back it really sticks out quite a bit right there and um, that can be quite painful so a couple things that can happen number one you can have arthritis in these joints and when you have metatarsalgia the most common area to have that is right in this area right here the second third and fourth heads um, so arthritis or inflammation in that area maybe you've increased your walking or running mileage um, that can cause some trauma to that area and get really inflamed um, your foot you can have morton's neuroma so between these bones there's a little nerve that comes up and through here and that can cause pain around this area in the ball of your foot. You can have a loss of the fat pad under here. There's a little bit of fat under here and when that gets a little thinner, you can end up with more trauma to that area. Uh, and the other thing that you could see here is maybe a little stress fracture that can, you know, you might have a little break in that bone next to the joint and that can cause you some pain right there. So what are some of the causes of pain in the ball of the foot or metatarsalgia. Well, the number one cause is a tight calf over here, all right? So it is very well documented and studied that if the calf is tight, it is pulling the heel this way. The plantar fascia is pulling the heel this way. This is much more powerful than this is down here. So therefore, when he's walking and he steps off, if the foot and ankle doesn't go back, 20 to 25 degrees, then he's going to put a significant amount of pressure over this part of his foot. So the direct correlation between tightness here and an excessive amount of pressure here. The other reason somebody could have this is, like I said earlier, overuse. Okay, so increased mileage or maybe you're standing on your feet a lot more. Maybe you're wearing high heels uh, more than you typically would and that puts a lot more pressure in this area. Then trauma is another reason why somebody could have discomfort in this area. So a lot of people use their foot as a sledgehammer or a hammer and they kick things with it. So kicking a brick or a piece of wood um, with this part of the foot could cause an irritation. The other thing that can happen is you can tear some of the fibrous tissues that help to hold these metatarsals together and uh, that is called the plantar plate and if you tear that you'll typically have some pain in here and a separation of the toes like this okay and I have a video on that all you have to do is google Paul Markey and um, V toes and I talk about that so the other issue that we might have um, with this is that if you're walking too much, causing too much irritation, you're gonna start walking on the outside of the foot and you could end up with a little bit of discomfort out here just because you're taking some pressure off. So how do we treat metatarsalgia or pain in the ball of the foot? Well, there are some really easy things that you can start with. And the first thing that I always have my patients do because most of these folks have tight calves and that is to stretch the calf out. Now what we don't wanna do is cause so much trauma over here while stretching the calf that it causes more irritation. So some people will actually, and I'll put a picture of this in this video, 
will actually hang off of a step so the heel drops down and there's look at all of the pressure that occurs here when you're hanging off of a step okay so we use a slant board that has total contact with the foot and therefore you don't get too much pressure over here so slant board stretching is the absolute number one way to stretch your calf muscle out without causing too much pressure over here all right the next thing that you should look into are good shoes okay so a good pair of sneakers that has a good cushion on the inside can help with this trying to avoid walking barefooted and if the shoe really folds easily like this you might want to jump into something that has more of a rocker to the bottom and as you can see I have a hard time bending this so we end up rolling a little bit more and not causing so much trauma like this like if you're working on something where you're bent over and you're getting a lot of compression right there that can be helpful now one of the key pieces of treatment that i do with patients and i love this it's probably the number one diagnosis i like to treat with orthotics is using some sort of an orthotic it doesn't have to be a custom orthotic it can be a semi-custom orthotic um, and i use a metatarsal pad now it's very important here that if you were to do this on your own that you put this metatarsal pad in the right place now you might think that you need to put it right over the sore spot well when you're walking on this and you're putting all of this pressure here and you have a tight calf and you're compressing this part of your foot into the metatarsal pad uh, it's going to be like having a rock in your shoe it's going to be too much what you want to do is you want to put it through the shaft of the bone which goes all the way down here and utilize this little piece here as you can see it's rounded it has a little bit of thickness to it and basically the metatarsal heads fall off of the cliff and because this is made rounded like this it helps to reestablish this arch part of the foot a lot of people with metatarsalgia end up having a foot that splays like this so the second third and fourth heads drop and hit the ground a lot harder so what we want to do is we want to reestablish this arch like that so it's more like this when you look at the toes okay so getting this in the right spot is key people who do this have usually immediate relief if all they have is inflammation of those metatarsal heads so this simply goes into the orthotic like this we have a little bit of arch support that can also be helpful and you can see where that lands right here the metatarsal heads fall off the cliff we have this nice cushiony pad here that can also increase comfort now the next thing you should do is if you're a runner or a walker maybe decrease that mileage a little bit maybe get into the pool and do some swimming or maybe start some biking if you are a biker and you're using a clip-in type of shoe that clip sometimes sits a little too far forward on the shoe so take your clip and unscrew it and set it back a little bit more so you're putting more pressure here and not so much on the ball of the foot right there and that can also help give you a little bit of relief while you're doing your activities so that is metatarsalgia those are the causes of why you have it and a little simple you know treatment regime so that you can help take care of this at home um, when you do the stretching on the slant board i recommend five stretches at 30 seconds a piece okay you step off in between or you change foot uh, and you do that like i said five times in the morning five times at noon five times uh, maybe around dinner time and if you're the type of person who cramps a lot which a lot of people with tight calves do then you want to do another series of stretches right before you go to bed and your nighttime cramps will get better significantly okay so hope you enjoyed today's video if you want to learn a little bit more about the difference between metatarsalgia and morton's neuroma which is really easy to confuse click on the video above and uh, i have a little video that helps to describe the difference between the two hope you enjoyed today's video if you did give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe thanks